Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries this year at the Hanover Fair in the year of 2015. Every 15 minutes, I invite you to enjoy presentations concerning the hydrogen industry. You can all have a seat. All drinks are on the house. There's a lovely lady walking around serving you with the drinks. The next topic will be by Dana, Dana Metallic Bipolar Plates, enabler for the European Autostack Core platform. And for that, we'll have here the presenter, the manager for the fuel cell R&D at Dana Holding Corporation. Please welcome with me on stage, Dr. Joachim Scherer. Big hands. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much for the kind introduction. And um, I'd like to welcome you to my presentation. So my name is Joachim Scherer. I'm representing Dana Holding Corporation. It's a Maumee, Ohio-based automotive fuel cell supplier, which is already in the component production or development for fuel cells since 16 years. And today I'd like to show you the recent results on the automotive auto stack core project and funded project where we are as Dana Corporation, the developer and the uh, manufacturer of the bipolar plates. So the Autostack Core project is a funded project by the European Union. Our goal is to develop an automotive fuel cell stack with 95 kilowatts, and which should have superior power density, performance, and durability. And also we would like to meet or we target to meet the commercial targets for further um, implementation to serial production. There you see the big list of partners from automotive OEMs, stack suppliers, and also institutes and um, component uh, suppliers. So we started in May 2013 with driving the specification of the components and the stack, and we currently finished the design evolution one, having there on place at the first 95 kilowatt uh, fuel cell stack. And we're just starting out the improved design evolution two, which should be available later this year. So one core Part of this stack is for sure the bipolar plate, and we as Dana are focusing on the metallic bipolar plate, and I'd like to dive deeper into the properties of the metallic bipolar plate and some unique features that we can give to this part. So this is the typical way how Dana is producing metallic bipolar plates. So we developed a high-speed precision stamping currently with 0.1 millimeter sheet stainless steel, but we can go much thinner on that. We have a joining process where we can join these very tiny micro channels and uh, make a leak tight seal around the cooling compartment. We have a propriety fully integrated bead seal, which is a metallic seal, which has superior um, properties compared to a rubber seal, especially for free starting and also for leak tightness because the metal has no permeation ability for the hydrogen. And we also develop for our products um, in-house a low-cost coating, which is currently on Evolution 1, the solution we put onto the plate, and I will dive deeper into this in the next slides. So starting now with the conductive coating, as everybody knows in the fuels industry, we'd like to have a minimum resistance on the bipolar plate to keep um, the power as an available power, not just using it to heating up the stack. So this is a typical stack run on a lab plate we developed with a partial um, carbon coating on top. So we coat only the landings of the, of the channels and by this reducing even furthermore the material. And there you see over more than 3,000 hours, we have a total degradation including the MEA of eight microvolts per hour. So if you just calculate this further, if you allow 10% of beginning of life reduction in performance, you could end up with up to 7,000 hours of operation. This is currently on a galvanic static, so current uh, um, stable current operation, but we're now diving deeper into uh, more um, dynamic cycling, and there we see similar behavior on the coding side. So if you look at the resistance, we'd like to have a through plate resistance as low as possible. So the blank stainless steel is more than 100 milliohm centimeter square, measured from top of the bipolar plate to the bottom, together with two GDLs. And if you compare this to composite plate like molded plates or machine plates, which can come down to around about 20 milliohms, this is as a reference a, th a thick gold coating, this is a thin gold coating, and we can design our coatings to come close 
to both of them. So we are in the range where a gold coating can be with a much lower price in the coating and also in the coating process. So when we compare this to state-of-the-art other bipolar plate coatings, you see this is our coating here. So begin of life, we're around about 12, 10 to 11 milliohms centimeter square. And after 880 hours of dynamic cycling, we have a slight increase lower than 12. The goal is to stay below 20. And with other coatings, which might be at the begin of life lower than ours, because of some um, effects on the coating, we see an increase in the same uh, operation time that exceeds even the end of life uh, conductivity of uh, our coating. There are other options on the market which have a very low um, resistance, which also stay at a very low level after this test. So this is definitely an option we will look into in evolution too. So another, op um, uh, another positive effect of our coating is, so the solid lines gives you the um, through plate resistance over different compression uh, forces of the stack. So the typical value where you compress the GDL is between 0.8 to 1 Newton per millimeter square. And if you look at these options, so the blue one is again the Dana coding. You see that our uh, resistance stays quite flat over a wide compression range. The same thing with the, um, um, the other coding that we're currently looking at. And there we have the advantage. If any compression change in the stack occurs, the conductivity of the plate stays almost the same. So the next part of the metallic bipolar plate, which is, gives a unique feature, um, is the metal metal metallic bead seal. So the main elastic part of the seal is metallic. It's a stamped structure. And there's only a thin coating on top to uh, look, um, take care about the micro seal. So what we do, we get the GDL material from our customers. Then we make forced compression curves on the GDL material. Then we design the bead seal. And there you can see how we can fine tune the compression behavior of the bead seal depending on the MEA performance and the MEA properties. So it can be quite soft. We can make it a little bit stiffer. And then by optimizing these two, we come to a solution. This is a Fuji print of a uh, typical port uh, with a bead seal, and you see we have a very homogeneous compression, which is in a very low level, uh, far below 4 newtons per millimeter square. And this perfectly seals um, several bars in tone pressure. So that's the, the final calculation what we do. Here you see in a schematic drawing, here's the bead seal. This is the soft goods package. So the compression curve of the soft goods is here in the black line. Already, this is the tolerance band that the typical MEA gives you today. And then we design the bead seal to fit perfectly into that. And then we get the design point, which is then finally the cell pitch. And so that is where we design the, the bead seal. And you give this is a pure, secure sealing working range where we have full elastic behavior of the bead seal, where it's easy to accommodate to any tolerances and also uh, height changes in the stack through to thermal cycling, for example. So this is an example of an, um, a long stack we did on a simple lab plate. You can see on the booth uh, B71 where we are located, even a part in original. And we stacked this up to 370 cells and tested the leakage. So the red line gives you the normalized leakage coming from the DOE targets. And if you look at this stack at uh, 300 millibar ga gauge pressure, Everything is at a very, very low level. And even if you combine anode and cathode, 500 millibars and one bar, um, this is still far below the DOE targets. And so this gives you uh, an insight that even if you stack up to a full-size stack, the bead seal gives you a superior seal performance. So with the design group within the outer stack core project, we now finally designed the evolution one of the stack. We have the one as an original on our booth. So currently, the target was 95 kilowatts with the Evolution 1. We have now achieved real, uh, real tested 94 kilowatts at uh, maximum continuous operation, which means 1.5 uh, amps per square centimeter, and a peak at 1.9 amps per square centimeter, which reaches almost 100 kilowatts. 
So the complete stack from here, including the end plates and everything, has a, a stack power density of 2.6 kilowatts per liter <coughs> at nominal and 2.8 kilowatts per liter at peak power. So this is quite in the range where currently high performing stacks are located. We typical operating conditions uh, is 75 uh, uh, degrees centigrade and we have an absolute pressure of 200 kilopascal, so only one bar gauge at this operating conditions and this performance. So the recent results were we have a very robust stack setup. It's very easy to set up even a 330 cell stack. We have a very reliable lead tightness and a high performance even at very low stoichiometries. And we have already shown a free start from minus 20 degrees C. And the latest result is even a shaker test with a 20 cell stack ended without any hassles on the leak tightness. So we have now the several um, 20 cell stacks and one full operating full size stack, which are now tested to get any results to feed into the evolution two development of this stack. So coming to the closing of my talk, you can see the original on our booth, B71, at the Dana booth. And again, here is the consortium that um, is working on this stack. And if you compare the old Münster, which is the highest church tower in the world, this is round about 132,000 by polo plates or 30,000 stacks. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. I open uh, the forum now for questions from the audience. Everybody happy? Okay, one question here, and we only have time for one question. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Henrik Jungkranz from Impact Coatings. Uh, can you comment a little bit about the different coatings? Uh, you, you have just uh, uh, some numbers and, and, and funny names on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So I cannot, unfortunately, disclose the, the companies which uh, do it then, despite the one that we have in our own development. These are made by suppliers. And um, all the three are PVD coatings, specially developed for PEM fuel cells. And you can see um, the test conditions we took were really automotive-like, so 75 degrees C in a mild dynamic to some extent, but we went through all the potential ranges really causing the um, um, good stress to the coating, and you see that one really performed very, very nicely. And we will have more results in the Evolution 2 where we test this on full-size plates. So this is currently on lab plates done, but with the same conditions like we test the full-size stack. Just one tiny more question. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, though I was not there for the full uh, session, I've just come uh, at the fag end of the uh, event. Uh, can you tell me something about uh, this, uh, the, the hydrogen fuel cells uh, application on automobile, especially on, uh, on a two-wheeler? Because basically we are from India. The team is from India. So probably we discussed this question because this is a longer question. At our booth, just down the, the, uh, the aisle, I will be there in 10 minutes roundabout and we can discuss in detail. And we have the stack in front of us, then we talk about it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Joachim Scherer, for this presentation. Thank you. Uh, for all the other questions, please have a, have a visit. Uh, go and visit the booth of Dana Holding. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next talk will be only in two minutes' time. Uh, for that, we will have the topic Membranes for Water, Electrolysis, and for Flow Batteries by Fumer Tech. And only two minutes' time. <laughs>